Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Arai RX7V helmet. Arai's RX7V is the pinnacle of their helmet development, having been designed for racing. It was released back in 2015, and it was the first Arai in ages to get full marks in the UK government's sharp impact tests, and it also saw the introduction of an all-new visor mounting system. It's become very popular in the years since, with Arai devotees in particular singing its praises very, very loudly. We've had just over 150 customer reviews for the RX7V as we record this, and 145 of those have been five-star reviews, so it's obvious that owners are very happy with their purchase. That's a particularly impressive tally for something with such a hefty price tag. As we film this, the RX7V starts at $669.99 for a plain color and goes up to $789.99 for race replicas like this Vinales rep. As you'd expect, when people spend that amount of money, they expect the best, and rightly, they're more picky in the way they review things. So for 95% of buyers to give full marks to a helmet with such a high price tag is pretty damn good in my opinion. So what is it that makes this helmet worth the money? Let's start with the shell material. It's made using Arai's PB SNC2 construction. That means it's made from a laminate of fibers designed to balance weight and impact protection. The PB part stands for peripherally belted, which means there's a reinforcing band of fiber just above the eye port here. That gives more structural strength and allows our eye to use a thinner polystyrene impact liner just above the rider's eyes here. That helps with peripheral vision, which is especially important on a race helmet where riders often want to achieve something that's bordering on the impossible. They want to see where they're going while they've got their face pointing towards the floor. The vision on this helmet is really good and it's something that is frequently mentioned in those 150 or so customer reviews. Our eyes philosophy on shells has always been to make them tough and able to resist a spike penetration test, even if the relevant safety standard that they're applying for doesn't demand that test is carried out. They say having a tougher outer shell means they can run a softer EPS impact liner and still get exceptional impact protection results. The everyday downside to that is that our eyes tend to run heavier than many equivalent helmets. We've weighed this size medium RX7V and it registered 1626 grams on our scales. That's quite a bit above many equivalent sports and race helmets, which tend to sit somewhere between 1300 and 1500 grams. But numbers don't always tell the full story. And many owners within the reviews describe their Arai RX7V as light. The scales might suggest the opposite, but the RX7V clearly carries its weight well, and it must have a good balance for people to describe it in those terms. My experience of this helmet has been a few hundred miles on the road on both naked bikes and sports bikes, on both short stints and also longer journeys. As for the weight, I did notice the extra when compared to equivalent helmets from other manufacturers that I've worn recently, but I was surprised when the scales showed that weight of 1626 grams, as I don't feel this helmet feels as heavy as that when it's in use. Venting through that shell is one of the key aspects of the RX7V with a three-stage chin vent, which is either fully open, fully closed, or halfway between the two. There are also a whole series of vents on top of the shell. The central top vent is the simplest. Slide the switch back and forth to reveal a hole that draws air inside the helmet. The diffuser, this part here, that's a classic design that's been on our eyes helmets for ages. The idea is that these scoops pull cool air over the top of the helmet, forcing hot air that's on the inside to rise and leave the interior through holes on the top. Switched exhaust vents on the back then allow that air to escape through the rear of the diffuser. There are six holes through the shell and the EPS into the helmet interior to allow that air to escape. If that's not enough venting for you, then Arai's trademark brow vents are here to give you even more airflow. These little vents on top of the visor rotate open and allow some air to come through the top of the visor and then travel through these ducts to draw cooling air to the rider's temples. That's not a new idea, but it's unique to Arai and it works brilliantly. So the visor was one of the most prominent new features when this helmet was released. It's Arai's VAS V system, and it's gone on to be used in most subsequent new Arai models. The main advantage is that the side pods just here are smaller than the previous system, and they also sit lower on the shell. 
This allows more of the shell's material to contribute more to the protective qualities of the helmet. Our eyes star ratings in the sharp impact scheme have improved noticeably since this new visor system was introduced. So the extra protection is the main advantage, but there's also a more obvious everyday advantage to this, and that comes in the way the visor changes with the VASV system. The, these side pods now detach from the helmet to allow access to the visor mounting. The pods are still tethered to the lid, so when I push that there, you can still see they're tethered to the lid, which means there's virtually no risk of losing one. This new changing method was has proven quite divisive amongst RI owners. The old system, which is still found on several RIs in their range, involves feeding the ends of the visor between the shell and the side pods in this gap here. And you don't need to remove the side pods to change the visor. If you get that right, the old system is quicker for a visor change, but get it wrong and it'll take a lot longer and it might even leave you needing a new side pod. Some owner reviewers of this helmet say they prefer the old system for its speed, but the majority of people who mention it in their reviews say they prefer this new method as it feels much simpler and more secure. The other innovation for this visor is the locking tab to the lower left of the helmet just here. It can lock the visor securely down, it can also lever it open slightly to allow in a small amount of air. With the visor down, give it a firm push and it will lock shut against the tab. Push the lever up with your thumb and the visor is now locked into a slightly open position. It leaves a very small gap around the seal to allow in some air, but the visor can't open any further in the wind flow. From this position, pulling the visor away from the helmet slightly makes it clear the tab and then it can now be lifted open. Some of the customer reviewers of this helmet describe that lever as fiddly, especially those people who've tried operating it with winter gloves. Others say it's something that you get used to, and that's where I found myself. It doesn't take long for it to feel fairly natural to use that tab, though it is harder to get your glove inside and pull it, peel it away when you're wearing a thicker glove. So the basics for the visor itself, it offers very good peripheral vision, and it's also supplied with a Pinlock 120 insert to protect against misting. It's a max vision insert, so it covers the vast majority of the inner surface to stop the ceiling trim itself from interfering with your vision. Switching to the inside of the helmet, the liner is plush, which is one of the main attractions to our eyes helmets, and it's antimicrobial to keep it feeling fresh. Both skull pad and cheek pads are removable, and different thicknesses are available to customize the fit if that's something that's gonna help you. If you're buying from us and you want to go with that service, contact our customer support team and they'll be able to run through the options of how you get different thicknesses of skull pad and cheek pad. The cheek pads have pockets to accommodate intercom speakers and the removable neck roll also has an exhaust vent just here at the back to help warm air escape. Like all our eyes and the vast majority of race lids, this helmet has a D-ring strap fastener and the covers just here that stop your skin being irritated by the strap can also be unclipped and taken away for washing. There's a large removable chin curtain just here to make the ride quieter on the road. Taking that out will increase airflow, but it will come at the expense of some extra road noise. Then there's a spoiler here that can be pulled down to provide some extra protection against wind flow and chills. So, approvals for this helmet. It's ECE 2205 for road use. It's got the ACU gold sticker for race and track use here in the UK. And as I said earlier, it scored the full five stars in the UK government's sharp impact scheme. So having spent those few hundred miles on the road in this helmet, it's an impressive piece of kit, and I don't doubt for a second that it would offer first-class protection if it was ever called into action. In my experience, it was better on bikes with a fairing or a screen to give some shelter against the wind, and it felt a little bit less aerodynamic when pushing through clean air and riding on a naked bike. But this is a race helmet, and that's the way it's designed to be used, behind a fairing. And talking of which, if you really are going racing, then it may be worth looking at the RX-7V FIM model, which has a spoiler at the back for extra aerodynamic sleekness and a different visor to better suit the demands of racing. It's also approved to the international racing standard, which is something you might need when racing at the higher levels. Right, it feels like I've been going on for hours about this helmet, so I hope that covers everything you wanted to know about the Arai RX-7V. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. And if you like our videos and you want to stay up to date with what's going on, please click the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching.